Corey Dix. I'm an actor and I'm a huge uh, mental health advocate. Um, I also do suffer from mental health issues. I have severe depression, generalized anxiety, panic disorder, PTSD, and what they like to call bipolar spectrum. Um, and yeah, and I think that we'll introduce ourselves and then from there I, I did say that I think it'd be best to talk about mental health as an open discussion. So I think we're going to give our opinions on that, um, each of us. So yeah, if you want to go ahead, Richard. Cool. Hi, everyone. My name is Richard Walters. I am an actor and a music artist from Toronto. Um, uh, for those of you who do not know, I'm known for being on the TV show Degrassi. Um, and th thankfully, through Degrassi, they cover a lot of different issues, that being mental health issues. Uh, so I'm glad that I'm a, I'm, I have the opportunity to speak to everybody here and whoever else is watching around the world, which is awesome. Um, experiences that I've had and the experiences that I learned from other people. So we're going to have a great discussion. Um, hey, I'm Meg DeAngelis, and I have a YouTube channel, um, and I think, like, there's, you know, a lot of problems with social media and how it affects mental health, and I wanted to kind of talk to you guys a bit about that today. Um, I've been pretty open in my YouTube videos about my struggles with anxiety, and I just feel like, you know, especially to do with social media, like, Finding the balance is so hard, so I was hoping that, yeah, I could talk to you guys a bit about that today. Okay, awesome. So, Richard, if you want to go ahead and start the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I was echoing before, ladies and gentlemen, um, I had the fantastic opportunity to be on a, on a great Canadian show, that being Degrassi, and um, we had to cover a lot of those issues, especially with mental health and what people have to go through and um, the people that they need around them in order to persevere through their obstacles, right? And um, for me, myself personally, um, I've been thankful and very fortunate to be able to have great people around me that didn't extend my troubles to a certain extent. So to give you a backstory, um, I was bullied heavily in elementary school because of, because of the color of my skin, racism. And luckily, the teachers and my parents and my friends that were around me, they helped me to get out of a certain situation so that my, my mental health didn't exceed a certain level where it didn't become diagnosed or it didn't become any more severe than I would have cared to have it be, you know? So I'm really, really thankful and blessed. I'm, um, I'm very fortunate to have those people help me out. But uh, for example, for people who don't have those kind of resources and, and, and that kind of people around them, imagine, like I definitely would not be on the stage with you now if I didn't have those people around me, that's for sure. I don't know where my mental health would have led to if it continued in that kind of direction. Um, but thankfully, I was able to, over the years, I was able to build, I would say, um, uh, comfort zones for me in regards to just, okay, you know what, if someone says that thing about me, I have these people who clearly disagree, so I know my self-value. Um, and uh, and uh, Degrassi was a great, also a great um, outlook on how other people dealt with those problems and how I, as a person, can help somebody else that I might know that are going through those kind of things. Like me and Corey, we've known each other for a good amount, like probably, what would you say, two years maybe? Yeah, at least that. At least two and years. And now we're working on a series together too. Like yes. That, so. And and the thing is though, like you would be, we'd have long, like literally hour conversations about things and just, just life, just life in general. And having that person to talk to, getting it out of your system alone is already a great way to help your issues, you know what I mean? If you keep it bottled up inside, it builds up and then it doesn't help anyone, including you know, whoever has those kind of issues. So um, thanks to Corey, he also educated me a lot on mental health, because I had the pleasure of joining him with different events, great events like this, and I was able to learn a lot from them. But um, yeah, he can actually tell you some more about that, actually. Yeah, so um, you know, growing up, I've always had you know, a bag full of bad eggs kind of handed to me, um, that I've always found a way to kind of get around it and make it as positive as I possibly can. Uh, growing up, you know, I had uh, parents that got divorced. Um, you know, I was bullied in school. And then I also went through a lot of trauma. I had a physical trauma about three years ago where I fell off a 50-foot cliff in Hamilton. A lot of people probably heard about that. Um, and I was in hospital for a year. And with that alone, um, it even worsened my depression and anxiety. Um, being someone that has mental health issues, um, there's lots of flaws within the system, 100%. Um, there is, 
I'm not gonna say there's very little help, but the help isn't properly promoted. Like, you know, everyone says, you know, just go to the hospital and talk to your crisis worker, but I've been in those shoes where I've been so depressed where I've had to go to the hospital, and I have been locked in one of those rooms uh, that literally looks like a jail cell, um, and I've had to then wait 24 hours to even talk to a crisis worker. So, um, you know, that, that in that setting, that just worsens someone's depression and anxiety. That's not, that's, not, that's not where someone wants to be when they're depressed or having, you know, panic attacks and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, there's, there's, there's tons of flaws and um, I try to make that very vocal. I tweet about it a lot. Um, I even tweet about like when I'm going to the therapist and stuff because I have a lot of people that reach out to me on Twitter, you know, asking for advice and stuff like that. I'm no professional, but um, you know, I kind of give them what's worked for me and stuff because the thing is with mental health issues, but dealing with depression and anxiety, it's not exactly, it's not going to go away in the flash. And to be honest with you, it never really does go away. It can get better, but it's a lot about coping with it and, and how you, you know, move forward with, with dealing with your mental health issues. And it's not just me. Like it's, there's a lot of people, even in the industry that some of them don't talk about it as often. Um, I know a lot of people that are depressed and that don't necessarily want to talk about it. Um, and I think we really have to make the conversation um, a lot more normal to talk about mental health and not be scared to talk about mental health because um, the more we talk about it and the more we, you know, the more we um, engage with one another about it and try to help each other, I think that's the way that we need to go. Um, and, you know, I even have you know, not same names, but I have um, a friend recently that, you know, attempted suicide and um, it was pretty severe. It ended up in ICU and everything. So this is an ongoing issue and it's something that we all deal with like on a regular basis. I'm sure everybody here at least knows someone that has depression and anxiety. Might not even know it. When I first started having my bad depression spells, my bad panic attacks, I honestly thought it was something physical with my body. I had no idea what was going on with me. So I think in terms of educating people and, you know, being more talkative about it, I think that's the way to go when it comes to mental health. Yeah, for sure. I think that, like, even now, even though it seems like obviously people are making good progress, I think people don't really know what it is sometimes. So, like, when I started... YouTube, I definitely didn't really talk about mental health because I didn't know much about it. And I feel like when I see other YouTubers now or other people like who, you know, have an audience talk openly about it, it completely helps the stigma so much. Like, I feel like definitely people are being a lot more open and talking about like anxiety and depression in videos, like for people that I've watched. And I've tried to be more open, it's do it doesn't come naturally to me, definitely, because it was, there is that, like, there was a stigma there, and I don't want there to be, but it didn't come or naturally to me at all at first, but now when I'm dealing with stuff, I just try to talk about it in my videos, like, as if I would to, like, my best friend, because I think the more open people can be, and the more they give of their own story, the more it makes you feel more normal and want to share more if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's how I feel. I wanted to um, uh, kind of piggyback off of both of you in regards to, for example, you use uh, YouTube as an outlet to relate to people. You use your actual experiences to relate to people. Uh, as an actor and an artist, I use film or I use my music to connect to people. I, I truly believe it's a great way to connect to one another and it has been the case. Uh, I remember um, <clears throat> the first song that I've ever written was called Speak and that song was based off of bullying, my bullying experiences. And things can't be changed. Things can't be addressed if you don't speak up about it. And I was in, and mind you, way easier said than done, for sure. Uh, there was times where I didn't speak to anybody about me being bullied at the time. I, I didn't want to. I was, I was embarrassed. I, I, was, I was depressed. I, was, I felt shameful. You know, like there's so many emotions that stop you from speaking. But when I finally did, I'll never forget, I talked to my principal, Ms. Smith, fantastic, amazing woman. As soon as I told her my troubles, things took a turn for the best. And as soon as I let her know what was going on with me, she dealt with the problem and, and then it made me be able to, to be honest, just simply live better. You know, being able to look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, I'm proud of who I see in my reflection. And Speak was definitely based off of that. And I still make music now today that encourage people to reach for their dreams, encourage them 
uh, to literally that, be a dreamer. I like, to, I like to call myself a dreamer and, um, and persevere regardless of the obstacle. Again, easier said than done, but find those things in life that encourage you to, or motivate you to do things, whether whatever career field that may be. Obviously for me, it's music, and I try to encourage myself through that to propel myself in a better way and inspire and encourage others. So, um, but yeah, literally using whatever outlets that you have to relate to another person because you can't do it by yourself. That's something that I learned a lot, but yeah. I'll be yeah, and you know, you were mentioning social media and I'll say that right now that I actually agree with the fact that Instagram got rid of likes because I think people are way too focused within their social media and they're trying to get likes and it, it, it you know, it messes with you in a way. So I think like in a way like how they stopped, you know, people being able to see likes, I actually think that's a good thing. I know, I remember hearing about that, and my first thought was just like really happy. <laughs> like, I was just like, it felt like almost like a relief. I don't know if they're gonna end up doing that, but I definitely feel like, you know, you don't really think about it because it's always been that way with Instagram. Yeah, there's like a like button, but that's kind of really fucked up. Like, that's literally a number for everyone to see right there. And like, if you're letting that number, change your mood or affect your mood even a little bit like that's kind of messed up but I feel like a lot of people do it because that's just like the way it's always been or I mean I didn't actually know it was like affecting me and everything until I feel like well I didn't really go on social media much I would only kind of go on to like post and then I took a break from posting and while I was taking a break from you know making videos I realized I would go on and watch other people and other things a lot more. And like if I have anything to say, it's like don't spend too much time watching other people and seeing what they're up to because it completely like changed. Like I feel like in that like six months, I literally became so like way too self-aware, like too self-conscious. I would compare myself to so many people and there was like just such a change because I really didn't go on social media at all before just to like look at what other people were doing. And I feel like a lot of people just do that in their everyday lives. And so I've really tried to cut back on doing that. And like right away, like things honestly, just like my perception of everything has become so much more positive again since trying not to go on just to like mindlessly scroll. So I don't know if I can say anything, I just feel like really passionate about that right now because it was just so crazy the difference it made like when I stopped, you know, comparing myself to everybody and going on the app constantly. Yeah, for sure. And I think like the problem with that too is like once you start comparing yourself, you almost try to like, you know, beat them in a way or try to like post like better content or whatever. I, I, I'm not going to lie, like for the first little while, like bef while I was, you know, dealing with, still dealing with my stuff, but you know, um, I, I was trying to do that and trying to like live up to the expectation of other, you know, celebrities and other, you know, other artists out there and other talents and stuff. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa like, wait a minute. And there's a, there was just a day that I came to it and I'm like, I need to do something different because and because, you know, I, I just want to be myself um, and I don't want to be this like fake character on social media. So now a lot of my tweets and a lot of stuff I post is very surreal. Like, you know, I'll post, like I said, about my, you know, my therapist appointments and stuff like that. And I'm open about it. I get, you know, some negative feedback saying, you know, whatever. But, um, but the bottom line is I'm proud of, you know, who I am, even with my issues. And I'm proud that I can stand up and say, yeah, I got this, these issues wrong with me, um, but I'm dealing with them. Right. You know, I'm going to see a therapist, you know, I'm trying my best and I'm trying my best to educate the public on mental health issues and what it feels like to be in someone like myself's shoes. And speaking on those issues, a very important thing that Meg actually mentioned is information or lack thereof, right? I, I'm almost, I, I definitely know, at least in my circle, not that many people know truly what mental health is. You know, I mean, they won't, there, there's, you hear the word a lot, you hear it thrown out a lot depending on the situation, but most people don't really go in depth, you know what I mean? There's no, it's just super vague and then it's almost left alone because of how vague it is. Um, having whichever, um, depending on your situation, if someone, for example, like it, I'll, I'll use Corey for, as a perfect example, he goes into depth about what he's doing. He doesn't literally just say, I'm going through this hashtag mental health awareness. Like he literally goes into what I'm doing, 
how I'm going through it, how difficult it is, and what I got to do to pers- like to overcome it. So those kind of things, the way he posted is very impactful because you're like, whoa, he had to go through all that. Like that's in, that's eye opening, and it will be eye opening to the point where it actually affects someone to do something about it. I've literally had conversations, even um, a tiff that went by some time back, and um, they've had very very eye opening films there that make you leave that theater saying, you know what. Something has to be, like, I, I can't live with myself just leaving it alone. You know what I mean? Because they went so much more in depth with the information about what they're talking about. So um, if you're somebody who knows someone who's passionate about it or someone who's going through it, look in depth. And then when you know that information, you have a better way of helping that said, you know, helping that said issue, depending on what it is. Um, so just getting that information out there, educate people on how serious it is and what you can do to help them, pretty much is what I wanted to say. Yeah, and I would say, like, people with depression, like I was mentioning earlier, not everyone wants to talk about it, and people will end up actually pushing people away. That's a very clear sign that they need some sort of help. When they start pushing you away, don't take that as an insult. Reach out to them and start, you know, questioning and see if you can get a little deeper because a lot of people with depression don't want to be open about it. And it took a while for me to become open about it. Um, I know like my very first time even touching on that subject was when I started doing some anti-bullying talks and stuff like that. And then uh, there was a moment where I stopped and I'm like, okay, you know, this is a good thing too, like anti-bullying, of course. Like you, But the bullying goes like, so. then I looked and it was, goes so much farther than that. The bullies have probably had mental health issues with fa- at home issues with their, you know, with their families and stuff like that. And it goes past that. It's all now mental health. And it all leads back to mental health. And um, if I may, uh, to piggyback off of that as well, um, uh, a very universal thing that, has, that I've witnessed um, and experienced is that even to strangers, people that you don't know, kind gestures, they go a long, long way. It, 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 it surprised you. Literally, I'll, I'll be downtown Toronto, and I'll simply open, open the door for somebody who has, like, a ton of bags. Something simple like that. Like, wow, you actually hold the door. You'd think that it's such a small thing, but for that person, they take it in as, like, wow, okay, thank you. Like, it's shocking for some people, depending on their situation. You know what I mean? Simply saying, hello, how are you? Something very, very simple like that. There's different things that you can do for people that the smallest of things that will really make them feel better about themselves. You know, and you'd be, I, I, I'm always shocked about it. Like, I remember, a um, uh, small story quickly. I remember literally going uh, to a gas station with my mom, all right? And I was just going to the, I was just going to pay for her gas. And I, um, I can't remember his name, but I saw uh, an acquaintance of mine, not even a friend, an acquaintance of mine from high school. And every single day when I saw him, it was just natural to me. I didn't think much of it. I'm like, hey, bro, how you doing? You good? And that's it. And that's the only kind of communication we'd have throughout the day, like almost every day until he eventually left the school because he didn't like he didn't have the greatest experience. But I saw him, uh, the time I saw him at the gas station was like two, three years later. And he was like, yo, Richard? And I'm like, I didn't even remember his name. He remembered mine. But I'm like, whoa, yeah, yeah wait, you, we went to the same high school. And he's like, yeah, man. Like, honestly, bro, I left. I couldn't stand it. But yo, you, you were one of the people who were like, I definitely remembered for sure. And I'm like, I didn't even hang out with him. I just literally was being kind. I was just giving him, you know, being respectful like any other human should be to another human being, and that helped him. And I didn't know that he was going through his own mental health issues down the line when I started to reconnect with him and talk to him. He was explaining to me his issues and why he left the school and he was bullied and all that. So I'm like, that's insane. Just saying hi to somebody, that's it. Had that much of an effect on him that he actually looked back and remembered who I was and was just said, thank you, bro. Thank you just for being kind. That's it. So those kind of things is something that I really like to articulate to people and let them know that, listen, those small actions can go a far, far away with people, you know? But, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, for sure, I guess, like, just something in general everyone should focus on more because mental health is on the inside. Like, you don't know what battles people are literally facing inside their own mind and brain. Like, it could be someone's, like, they could be so, so, so stressed out. And like he said, doing a small little thing can help so much. I mean, obviously, hold the door for someone if they're in a wheelchair. But I think it's nice to also do gestures to everybody like that because you don't know what's happening in their head. And, like, I mean, that's all I just wanted to say. Like, definitely, it's a good lesson for everybody. Yeah, for sure. And I think... um you know, when people say that mental health is only in the mind, um, 
Like for example, for someone with a panic attack. So I'll I'll, I'll give you an I'll give you an example. Um, when I get a panic attack because I have a the whole cardiac stuff after the trauma and stuff, my heart rate spikes. When my heart rate spikes, it turns into a really real physical issue. When people go into the hospital with a panic attack or they feel depressed or whatever, they almost get pushed to the side. It's like they're kind of like segregated and it's kind of like it's not nearly important as someone dying. Don't get me wrong. Someone dying is a very serious critical issue. But I feel like mental health is not looked at as like a major issue, at least within the hospital. There's so many like other like really good outlets out there. The problem is these really good outlets and these really good ways of getting proper therapy and stuff like that is not promoted heavily enough. Um, like my, like for example, my, you're probably wondering what, so my therapist says this stuff called um, neurofeedback, it's biofeedback, so they use an ECG machine to track your brain waves, and they can actually see spikes in where you have anxiety. So they use a, a screen monitor where they actually um, essentially um, train your brain, so you do brain exercises on the monitor, and, it, the, w and the way it works is it essentially strengthens your brain and you have better control over your thoughts and stuff like that and it's a very non-invasive procedure it's before medication and everything else but what I realized is the second when I was um, you know first diagnosed with my depression for example instead of trying to think of a natural therapeutic way I was instantly put on medication instantly right so um, so I you know I think that, um, that people should do a lot more research into these sort of um, ways and try to get help that way before jumping into the whole medication route. And it's interesting that you talk about prioritizing because at the end of the day, in regards to mental health awareness, mental is the brain. Everything starts with the brain. For me to lift up this mic to talk to you, that, that starts from the brain. So, you know, literally the brain is, should be the prioritized, like, you know, it should be the prioritized factor when it comes to these kind of things. So it, it always baffled me that because I do have very close friends who deal with serious mental health issues, and they would explain to me their, their, um, what they have to go through, and I'm like, how does that make sense? Like, it doesn't, like, I can't really think about it to make sense to me, because it literally, it affects everything else. When people lash out and they do stuff, it starts from the brain first, and then leads out. You know what I mean? So, it, it, it's something that clearly, as we all know, it's something that has to be continuously um, worked on in regards to better solutions to helping people who have these kind of issues. Um, and seeing a way where, because I remember they would go in, they would explain their situation to the doctor, whoever it is, hospital, clinic, whatever it may be, and they would, some, some of them has been turned away, some of them have been waited for hours until they have to leave, or when they finally get, to, when they finally get in, they get medication right away. They, there's no, it doesn't seem prioritized, and that's something that is a huge, huge issue. You know, that's, and as you've seen on the news and stuff like that, when you see people react the way that react, my mom always taught me that, listen, all these people come from somewhere. They didn't, they weren't born and they just decided, hey, you know, I'm gonna just do all these terrible things. It comes from somewhere. And you touched on it before, the bullies. The bullies who bullied me, for example, I learned later on in the years that he was being abused. It's, that's why I, I never look at people anymore and be like, oh, wow, that person just, uh, you know, whatever you'd call a bad person, you know what I mean? But you'd look at that person and be like, you know what? You must have gone through such terrible things to come out that way. Someone needs to help you. That's, what, that's how you should approach people when you see them in that way, opposed to being like, oh, no, no, you know what? He's just a, you know what? Forget about that person. You know what? I'm going to go about my business kind of thing. And then he'll, who knows what that person will do later on. We've seen these kind of things happen on a regular basis. So that's something that they should definitely rectify. I'm sure y'all, you know, I'm sure everyone here agrees on that. Like, check on your friends. Make sure your friends are okay. You know, if you think someone's being distant, it might not be because they're mad at you. It might be because they, have, you know, have their own issues. Like you were saying earlier, it could be because they're depressed. So check on your friends, but, you know, check on, I don't know if I want to say enemies, but check on, like, people who might be being rude to you or mean to you too because like he said, you don't know like what they're going through or where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, just got notice we got three minutes left to chat with you guys. Um, you know, the best thing I can say is, you know, be yourself and if you have to reach out for help, don't be ashamed for it. It was, took me very long to come out and say, you know, I need to get help. 
uh, because I was worried about what people were going to think of me. And, you know, a batch of people did think of me differently after I came out and said, hey, you know, I've been diagnosed with this. And you know what? Uh, at that point, I was like, it's more important for me to come out and get help. And if people are not going to like me for me and because I and kind of work with me around these issues, then to be quite frank, they're not worth having in my life. So, you know, so I, you know, you need to reach out and try your best to get help. I know with mental health, it's very obvious. There's not too many resources out there. It's unfortunate. It's the way it is right now. Um, but there is, and you have to dig a lot deeper. Um, and, you know, go to, to your close peers. Go to your family. If not your family or close peers, then call a crisis line and literally just vent your heart out because there is help out there. There is ways to get help, and, you know, it's... It's not necessarily going to go away fully, but you definitely will feel at least a little bit better. Absolutely. And in, and in closing, um, you pretty much touched on it, but for people who don't have the resources to have access to doctors and have access to people who specialize in these kind of things, uh, like I said with my music, find those things in life that make you happy and milk it to the fullest extent because those are the things that will definitely get you by. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, well, I was just going to say there also is online therapists so if I know a lot of time with times with mental illness dealing with people or even just talking to someone face to face like in a room can be scary and maybe you might put it off because of that but there is online therapists and people you can message chat to too you don't have to call people um I think I left a link in one of my latest YouTube videos but if you google online therapy it's a thing and if you need that to be a way to start something that's also a way yeah for sure so um I think we're just about to be out of time. I think, yes. And, uh, well, nonetheless, thank <laughs> you so much for, uh, for listening in on this. This is a very big issue yeah. that we're glad we're putting a lot of emphasis on and uh, getting, um, you know. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. Appreciate you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.